Good evening. Uh, thank you for uh, clicking on this video. Uh, again, my name is Brian. Um, glad to, to serve you on, on this evening. Uh, this I call this is what I call an encouragement session. So, so we're we're going to take a uh, a moment or two to just spend spend some time together to just talk about uh, this evening's uh, topic. We're going to talk about this is an encouragement session for. Uh, uh, seeking wisdom, you know, seeking wisdom and, and understanding and, and how, how to go about it. And, and we're going to come from Proverbs chapter uh, 4 and 7, okay? But first, let's just start out with, with a word of prayer. Oh, Father, we, we, we thank you for, for, for my sister and my brother that's, that's, that's just downloading this video. And we're just so grateful, Lord, for just you are opening our hearts, Lord, to receive from you at this moment in time, Lord. We're just so grateful, Lord. Lord, wisdom is just such an underrated commodity, oh God. Lord, give us the, the mentality to, to seek it and, des and desire it at all times, Lord. Give Before we seek that job, before we seek that relationship, before we seek that engagement, before we seek that contract, Lord, but before we seek that opportunity, Lord, before we seek that major purchase, Lord, before we seek that church, Lord, that ministry, Lord, Lord, we ask you to just give us wisdom, oh God. We just thank you, Lord. This is just so much we don't know. Let us just humbly come before you, Lord, to the person who knows everything, who knows everything. So, Lord, just... Thank you, Lord. Just sit and brood on us, Lord. Just develop us as we share our hearts and share our words this evening, Lord. We, we're we just so grateful, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so as mentioned, uh, we're having, I call this an encouragement session. We're, we're going to talk about uh, uh, how to go about seeking wisdom and, and understanding. And, and we're coming from, our main text for tonight is uh, Proverbs 4 and 7, but, but, but I, I want to build up to it in uh, Proverbs 1 through 7. Okay, so we're starting here. Uh, uh, the, the, the writer, I, I believe, is Solomon, but uh, it says, Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, coming from Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, and intend to know understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Doctrine is the subject of understanding. Okay, so more, more times, um, more, more times, than not, whenever we hear the word doctrine, um, but particular of the people of faith, we, we, we think of church. But the definition of doctrine is basically the subject of understanding, okay? So many institutions have a doctrine, okay? So Solomon, I, who, I, who I believe it, is Solomon speaking here, it says, for, for I give you good doctrine. He says, forsake ye not my law. In verse 3, it says, for I was my father's son. So, if it is Solomon, his father would, would be David. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Amen. I, I, I want to I wanna address something there. That, that, that's saying a lot there. So, the... the uh, in um, in my uh, Kingdom Prosperity vi video, uh, Dynasty uh, parts one, two, and three, I, I, I talk about uh, the children of, of, of God. And if you haven't seen, seen that video, please download that, that video. It, it it's very it, it's very uh, very powerful. It, it's just seeing Genesis chapter one from a totally different uh, aspect. So, um. I'm I'm bringing up that the Kingdom Prosperity videos part one, two, and three is because um, it mentions how we need to be fruitful, multiply, 
replenish the earth, which means distribute, and subdue, which means to take over. Okay, so one one of the the fruitful things that we have in existence are books. Okay, so um, Solomon wrote the majority of proverbs. Okay, he wrote the the majority of, of uh, proverbs. There, there there are there are obviously other writers in in uh, proverbs, but Solomon wrote the majority of proverbs. So he wrote his intention for writing the book of proverbs was to have written instructions to his children. So if you remember his background, King Solomon, uh, he, he is the third third greatest king we ever had behind Jesus and, and David. He was the third greatest king we ever had. So when, when you look in his background, he had, the, the Bible says he had uh, 700 wives. Being the richest man in the world, you know, his his net worth, uh, uh, I understand it to be in today's terms, it will be in the trillions. It will be in the trillions. So. Solomon would marry all of these wives. As an act of policy, we, we call it politics as, as an act of policy. So. If if. If you look closely in the word, God promised that Solomon would have peace. He would have a time of peace where his father, David, didn't have a, a time of peace. David hands, David wasn't qualified to, to build the temple because his hands was always bloody. He, he was a man of war. OK, so he was always fighting. So um, God didn't want David to, to build the uh, temple. However, God did allow David to. To design the temple. A amen. Amen. So, so he was involved. But Solomon was the one who built the, the temple. So in this process of the 40 years that, that Solomon was king, he was always building. Reconstruction and building and, and you know, a, a very prosperous time. So you can only build when it's time of peace. So God promised Solomon a time of peace. So he took this time of peace and he's you know, work in policy, you know, international law, international policy, foreign policy. He's uh, uh, other kings and queens and magistrates is coming to him, bringing gifts and everything is added on to, to his net worth. And he's he's supplying wisdom, pretty much what, what, what I'm, I'm attempting to do tonight by, by, by the grace of God. So in in this. Sharing of policy. Magistrates and heads of states. They want to, they want, if you will, they want to take, uh, they want stock in this king. You know, the wisest man in the world, the richest man in the world. So what they would do is offer them their, their daughter. So we had a king who reigned for 40 years, accumulated 700 wives, and the Bible says 300 concubines. Okay. Okay. So God promised him peace, but Solomon acted under the, in his own understanding that, oh, I, I got to do this to keep the peace. When God says you have something, you don't need to come behind and conjure something, something up, okay? Because I know the watchers of this video, we have some people that know how to fix things, you know, and, 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 I, and I admit I, I'm a fixer too. Now... There's no point of fixing something God said he has already fixed. So if God said he already fixed something and you're coming behind him and you're trying to fix it, you're making it worse. OK, so in the name of Jesus, stop right now. Just stop it. OK, because you're making it worse. So through this mentality of I got to do something. He's accepting the, these wives now. Now. Now, I, I've never been married before, but I know a couple of things about marriage, uh, about marriage. What I know about one of the many things I know about marriage is either the spouse is going to convert you or you're going to convert them. OK, so Solomon is grossly outnumbered. Seven hundred wives. <laughs> OK, so this 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 great man of God is a is eventually led in his life in a, a time of idolatry. OK, 
the Bible says that God hates idolatry because Solomon, who was the wisest man in the world, he overthought the process. He overthought the process. God said, I will give you peace. I will give you a time of peace for you to build. And Solomon did just that. Just that. And he went about himself and he wanted to do something a little more. And, he, and it backfired on him in a big way. In a big way. Amen. So, to make peace, he... And, and this, this is historically what, what, what kings and heads of states do. They offer each other their daughter or their son so they become a family to guarantee peace. It's like you don't have to, you don't have to guarantee peace when God said that there will be peace. So um, tonight's topic is, is, is trying to get seeking wisdom and understanding and he just made the, the situation worse. So here it is in verse 3. He says, For I was my father's son. I was my father's son. Tender. I was tender. A teenage Solomon, the way he loved his father, but Sol who David, who had his own emotional scars from his children, referring to Absalom, uh, to name one, he, he had other sons that, that have rebelled a, a, a against him. Um, also, Jesse. Jesse, who was David's father. See, the fight you're fighting didn't start with you, okay? I, I, I want you to hear me, hear me tonight. The fight that you're fighting did not start with you, and you have to accept that. That's why we have to rely on God, okay? We have to rely on God. The fight you're fighting, the fight you're fighting doesn't even belong to you. You have to be humble enough to turn it over to God and to be at peace. Even when things don't look peaceful, you have to be at peace, okay? So we, we, we just need to receive God's word, receive it by faith. We have to receive it by, by faith because faith and logic doesn't always appear to be the, the, the same thing. So <clears throat> a teenage Solomon was tender towards his father where David, if you look closely, really wasn't paying Solomon any mind. David only paid Solomon mind when he was in his latter years and getting ready to pass on. Notice how fathers sometimes pay attention to you at the tail end of their lives. Now they want to come back around. Because when, when they're in their youth and in their strength and trying to build their own careers, and, 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 and it's fine. You, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not referring to the fathers who are providing for, for, for their children. And, 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 you know, fathers show love in a different way, okay? Your, your mother may, you know, bake cookies, may bake brownies or whatever, but your father may show love by being gone all the time, working, keep, keeping uh, food in the house, <laughs> okay? You, the mother can't bake brownies if there's, there, there's no food or, or brownies there to make them, okay? So you have to accept that our parents loves us in different ways. You have to uh, accept that, okay? So... David in his elder years began to uh, instruct Solomon. He gave him a do and do not listen. And, and here, here, here we are. So, so, so notice how your mother is for your present, but your father is for your destiny. Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Your mother is for your present and for your comfort, but your father is for your destiny. Your father's for your destiny. Amen. So notice how your father don't really care too much about you and, and, and your practice and your rehearsals and everything. Where he tends to more than likely step up is when you start begin talking about marriage and career choices and buying a house. So he will be more involved uh, for some. He'll be more involved when you start getting into marriage and buying your first home and you start having children and, and you start talking about retirement. That's when he will get more involved because he's activated by your destiny. Dad equals destiny. Say it with me. Dad equals destiny. So you need to stop judging him because he's not like your mother. He's not supposed to be. He's not supposed to be. Okay. Okay. So you have to 
adjust your expectations, okay? You got to manage your expectations, okay? So in, in, in verse 3, he says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. So in Solomon's present was his mother actively in, in, in involved. In verse 4, it says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words and keep my commandments and live. So notice how your father, when he talks to you, he'll talk to you. Sometimes you, you may think he's talking to you in riddles. What he's really talking to you is in the fashion of equations. See how Solomon says in verse four, he taught me also. He taught me also, just like my mother. He taught me also, but in, in a different way. That's why he said also. And he said unto me, let thy heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Those three things. Those three things. <laughs> Amen. I know Solomon is, is famous for his wisdom, but David, oh, he went through the process. He went through the process of being the eighth son that no one really received other than, than his mother to when he became a man, having other sons and he paid some too much attention. He paid some just a little attention. He had a daughter that he really didn't pay enough attention to. And we see Solomon that he didn't, he should have spent more time with. Okay? So let's stop with being judgmental with our parents. Okay? Because do know, the way you treat your parents is how your children are going to treat you. Okay? So you want to sow some good seeds. Okay? You want to sow some, some, some good seeds. I, I believe commandment number five says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days shall be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's commandment no, no, number five in Exodus chapter, chapter 20. Um, so notice how your prosperity is linked to how you treat your parents. It doesn't say honor your parents because they're honorable. He says honor them because I put them there. Now, I know some are watching and your parent. Your, your dad or mom could be on drugs, strung out. You may not even know where they are. The first thing I want to say is God is able. And the second thing I want to say is stop the judgment. Okay? Just, just pray for them. Just receive them back in your life by, by faith. I know it's not all good. I understand. I understand better than I'm saying right now. Okay? But you want to honor your parents. It's because... It's the only commandment, commandment no, no, number five, that has the reward within the commandment. The other nine commandments don't have that, if, if you take a closer look. So notice how commandment number five is uniquely different from the other nine commandments. Just like your father or your mother is unique, uniquely different from each other. Notice how they're unique, uniquely huh, different from you. So you want to receive them well. Okay, amen. The, the Lord is watching you. Okay, the Lord is watching, you, and the Lord will bless you accordingly. Amen. Amen. In verse 5, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So here's another equation. Excuse me. In verse 4, it says, Let, let thou heart retain my words. Point one, keep my commandments. Point two, and point three, live. Live. When you live, you got to get over some, some things. Live. Get over some, some things. Don't let things stop you. Don't, don't let, for, for my sports fans watching, don't let someone do a shoestring tackle on you. You're running full speed ahead to, to your destiny. Don't let anyone even get close enough to trip you up. Keep going. Amen. And verse 5, it says, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Go to it. Get it. You got to pursue it. So, if you're... Going back to, to our, our Kingdom Pro Prosperity uh, videos, uh, part one, two, two, and three of Dynasty, you have to go to it. So if you're working 40, 50 hours a week, then you come home and you're taking care of the kids and you're doing housework and you're picking up your cleaning and then you, you, you bathe for, for the night, you take your bath, you take your shower and you get in bed. When you do that cycle, when do you have time to read? When do you have time to study? When do you have time to learn? You got to pursue it. So don't talk about pursuing a woman if you're not pursuing wisdom. 
Because wisdom keeps things cheaper. And, and what I mean by that is, when you operate in ignorance, it's going to cost you a lot. <laughs> okay, so 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 you want to pursue wisdom. You want to always uh, pursue understanding and, and everything. Okay, don't don't get don't make this long term decisions off of a temporary feeling. Okay, yeah, don't don't do that. Okay, so verse four and five. We see the equation, let the, let the heart return my, retain my words, point one, point two, keep my commandments, point three, and live. In verse five, it says, get wisdom, point four, point five, get understanding. It's, and then it says, forget it not, point six, and neither decline from the words of my mouth, point seven, amen. So what's the difference between wisdom and understanding? If I was to answer that, wisdom would be knowing the difference between something. Wisdom. Knowing the difference between something. As I said earlier, your mom is not like your, your dad. You got to have wisdom to know that. Knowing, noticing difference. Noticing the difference between your, your parents. Noticing the difference between your children. Noticing a difference between a moment. You know when to approach your supervisor about something, when not to approach them about something. That's wisdom. Okay? Wisdom. Understanding, uh, to me, understanding is understanding the application of something. Okay, so, so now you, you told me the difference now, how do I apply it? Okay, it, it, it it's like it's like uh, you know ha having a teacher. It's like okay, you gave me the bullet points, so how do I best apply it? That is understanding when you're absolutely exercising the application of something. That's understanding. So you need to know the difference between a person, a place, a thing, a, a moment in time, and, and a circumstance. That's wisdom. Understanding is applying the application of the wisdom. Amen. Amen. Shout out to, uh, to, to Brawin for, for, for putting the, this topic to, together for us to minister to you tonight. Um, so you need wisdom and understanding. Both are, are equally important because someone can coach you for 30 minutes. It's like, oh, oh okay, okay, thank you, thank you. And, and you can have all your notes. But if you do, if you don't know how to apply it, ew, things things can still turn out less desired. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. In verse six, this is forsake her not. So 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 now Solomon's talking about your attitude towards your attitude towards.